and know this right up front. Even if you perform this interview flawlessly and you knock it out of the park, nothing is guaranteed. Hey, future seller processing professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. This video is gonna be part two of the two-part series about applying for sterile processing and interviewing for sterile processing with zero experience. If you followed my advice and made it through the application process and landed an interview, boom, this video is for you. And well, damn, congratulations, my friend. This is a huge achievement and definitely something you should pat your back for. But now it's time for the hardest part of all. What do I wear? What do I say? Do I need a breath mint? How many people are gonna be interviewing me? What if I don't know the answer to a question? So many questions jump out of the anxiety that you must be feeling right now. And anxiety, though it's really uncomfortable, can actually be a very good thing. Anxiety lets you know that you're alive, but a lot of times it's also sending you a message if you're willing to listen. So what is it saying? It might be screaming that you're not confident and it's not a derogatory thing, it's an awareness thing. So then you might ask your anxiety, what do I need to be confident so I can make this anxiety go away? And that is a great question. You need to separate the controllables from the uncontrollables. You cannot control how many people are gonna be interviewing you. So you have to let that go. You can't control the questions that they're gonna ask you. So you have to let that go. So the question is, what can you control? You may not know the questions, but you can Google common interview questions and practice with those. The more and more you go over these questions, the more comfortable you'll be with them and the more familiar you'll be with them when it comes time to answer in front of other people. Once you've practiced these questions over and over again, they will not be surprising when they come up in the interview. The more questions you find to practice with, the less chance of a surprise question will come up in the interview. But even if it does, you've spent so much time going through these questions that you've built a lot of confidence along the way. So the other thing is you can't control how many people are gonna be interviewing you. So what do you do in this case? Well, you should be getting some friends, some family members, and doing some mock interviews for yourself. Have like three or four people interview you, set up a room and a table just like you're getting interviewed, and go through those questions. So not only are you getting better at the questions, you're getting more confident in answering questions in front of multiple people. So what else can you control? Well, think about how an interview normally goes. So it usually starts with introductions. They're gonna introduce themselves to you, and then they're gonna ask you to introduce yourself to them and tell them a little bit about yourself, maybe even why you're applying for this job. So practice that now. Who are you? What's important to share? How do you sum up your prior experience even if it doesn't match anything related to sterile processing? Are you applying just for the money? Are you applying for shits and giggles? They already know your prior experience. You made it past the application, right? So you don't need to launch all that stuff out there. You just need to be brief. Let's say you had time spent working at Walmart and then some time working at a gas station. You don't need to go into every single job that you've done. You can just say, I spent three years in retail. And you can even say that you spent time there because you hadn't quite decided what career you wanted to pursue yet. And why are you applying for this job? Let them know why you're attracted to this job. What is it about this job that draws your attention and focus and want to challenge yourself to learn it. Remember, no stepping stones. This job is not your foot in the door. As soon as you say something like that, the interview is over. Another important thing is they almost always have that ability for you to ask questions at the end. Always come prepared with at least one or two questions. If you don't have any questions, to me that shows maybe you're not quite as interested in the job. You can ask anything like, how long do you expect the training to be? Um, you can ask how soon until I hear back from you, but definitely be reading verbal and nonverbal communication. If you feel like you're asking too many questions, you can tell there's a little bit of annoyance or shift in posture. Maybe it's time to stop. One question I always like to get is how much room is there for overtime? When I hear someone ask that, it tells me that they're not only committed, they want to do extra over and above. Now let's jump into some really basic things you need to remember when you're in the interview room. 
Number one, make eye contact. I know this is not easy for everyone. So if this is not easy for you, you need to spend time practicing this, especially like in your mock interviews. Practice making eye contact with people that are asking you questions. I know it's not very culturally sensitive, but in the American job interview process, it's pretty much guaranteed that you need to be making eye contact. Be thankful, thank them for the opportunity to interview. People like to hear gratitude and it usually sets a pretty good tone at the start of the interview. Breathe, and I'm serious, breathe. When you are highly anxious, your sympathetic nervous system brings you to the, the brink of fight, flight, and freeze. So you need to do what you can to control that. Along with that can come tightness in your chest, maybe some bowel issues. So the more and more you breathe, the more you can calm that nervous system. And if you're not breathing, eventually you're gonna have these moments where you take a deep breath or you have a deep sigh, and that doesn't look good in an interview. Sit up tall and don't slouch. Everyone has poor posture nowadays, but when you're in an interview, it can send some pretty weird messages or people can interpret it in different ways, like maybe thinking you're lazy or thinking you're bored. Just avoid it. You need to know if you're a talker. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, ask your friends. If you tend to elaborate too much and you don't just briefly answer things, you need to kind of roll that back and choose a different way of responding to those questions. If they ask you a question and you start talking and you're elaborating, eventually either you're gonna to forget to answer the question and be asking what the question was, or you're just gonna bore them. Take notice of your anxious tics. Are you a tapper? Do you play with your hair a lot? Are you a leg shaker? Notice those and work on reducing those, especially when you're working in your mock interviews. Have them be looking for that so they can give you feedback. Stay on track with the questions. And this kind of comes with the talker thing. If someone asks you, like a question and you have this whole introductory thing before you get to the answer, a lot of times when you're nervous and you're in the midst of this, you're gonna get halfway through and totally forget where you're going with it and then have to ask them to repeat the question. If you need to give more detail, try to answer up front and then elaborate. If you're asked multiple part questions and they require a little bit of a lengthy um, answer, it's okay after answering the first question to say, can you remind me what that second question was? If you're asked an experience question such as, tell us about a time you were in conflict with a coworker and maybe you haven't been, or maybe you can't think of something in the moment because you're a little nervous and your brain's not working exactly right, don't just tell them, I didn't experience that. What you need to do is you need to answer it. So even if it's theoretical, you can say, well, I haven't experienced that, but if I was in that situation, this is what I would do. Don't make them ask the second part, because if you say I haven't experienced that, you know they're gonna ask, well, what would you do? So beat them to the question. Be grateful for who you are. If you suffer from self-hatred or self-loathing, this can be very difficult. So you need to start working on daily affirmations to not only build up your confidence and self-compassion, but actually start changing so that you can love yourself because that's gonna show on the outside. And if you do suffer from these, I highly recommend therapy because you shouldn't have to live this way. And know this right up front, even if you perform this interview flawlessly and you knock it out of the park, nothing is guaranteed. You can only focus on doing your best, ignoring the mistakes and moving on, and just accepting the results. There are so many reasons why someone couldn't get hired, such as another qualified applicant you didn't even see coming. Um, maybe there's some bias that you don't even know about. There's so many things you can't control and to try to control it is only gonna drive you crazy. I hope all this made sense and if any of you have further questions or anything you wanna share, please put that in the comments down below. I'll be sure to get to that as soon as possible. I love you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.